So far, every firm we've dealt with has operated in a market structure that we've called perfect competition. Under perfect competition, there are many small firms that are competing with one another and they're all essentially producing the same output. So from the perspective of consumers, they're producing perfectly substitutable outputs. And firms can freely enter and exit that market, so there are no barriers to entry or to exit. As a result, we were able to say that the price on the perfect competition is set by the interaction of supply and demand. There's a downward sloping demand curve for the good that all the firms are producing and the supply curve that intersects where that intersection gives us the equilibrium price. But from the perspective of the firm, that means that the demand curve for that firm's products is perfectly elastic at the equilibrium price. So the firm is small enough so it can sell anything it wants to at that equilibrium price without affecting that price. But if it tries to sell at a price higher than the equilibrium price, it won't sell anything because the consumers will just go to the competing firms. This market structure, perfect competition, is at one end of the spectrum of lots of different market structures we could have. On the other end of that spectrum is the case of a monopoly. A monopoly is a single large firm and it's producing an output that has no close substitutes so no one else is producing something that's close to it which means consumers have no other place to go so there are no close substitutes to what this firm is producing finally that firm is protected by some barrier to entry. Something is keeping other firms from entering that market and competing. Now when you have a monopoly, it means that that monopoly gets the entire demand curve for the market. So the market demand curve becomes that firm's demand curve. We have the same downward sloping market demand curve, but now that is the firm's demand curve. And so now the firm has the power to set price. It can't set just any price in quantity. For any price that it sets, it'll know that it'll can, it can sell a certain amount of the output. But it can choose its price in a way that competing firms in a perfectly competitive market could not choose price. So market power is all about the ability and the power to set price. And monopolies have that power because they face that downward sloping demand curve from the market. Now there are many market structures in between perfect monopoly and perfect competition. We'll get to those market structures. They'll come by the name of monopolistic competition. That'll be a market structure where there are smaller barriers to entry and firms are producing somewhat differentiated products. So there are some substitutes to their products, but they're not perfect substitutes. And so each firm has a somewhat downward sloping demand curve and therefore some power to set price. But there's more than one firm and there are lower barriers to entry, so new firms could enter those markets. Or we're going to talk about oligopoly competition. And the oligopoly competition, there are barriers to entry that keep other firms out. But within the industry, there are existing firms, more than one of them. And so they are producing goods that may be perfect substitutes for one another, but there's only a few larger firms in an oligopoly. The thing that every firm, other than perfect competition, has in common is that they face a downward sloping demand curve. It may not be the extreme of capturing an entire market that has no close substitutes, but all the firms that are in between these extremes have some market power and therefore face a somewhat downward sloping demand curve that enables it 
to set price.